The title of today's training presentation is Jump Ball. Let the game spin. Jump Ball is the method of putting the ball into play at the beginning of the game or any extra periods by tossing it up between two opponents in the center circle. It can be found in the following rule sets. Rule 428 and Rule 6.3 for National Federation High School and in both NCAA rule books, 6.2. It is one of the three methods for a dead ball to become live. The ball becomes live once the official tosses the ball. Ironic, because if you know your rules, you know that live ball, dead ball is the entirety of rule six. So it would make perfect sense that jump ball is contained within the rule of live ball, dead ball. The toss should go at least one foot above the tallest jumper. Jump ball starts when the ball is tossed. It ends when the ball is legally touched by a jumper, the playing court, a non-jumper, basket, backboard, an official, or when the ball becomes dead. Jumpers may touch the ball twice before the ball has to legally touch something else. And that something else are the things that we just mentioned above. If non-jumpers are three feet or closer to the center circle, then they cannot move until the ball is tossed. All other non-jumpers further than three feet from the center circle are not restricted from moving prior to the toss as described in Article 9 of the rule. Other restrictions include Article 8, where teammates shall not occupy adjacent positions around the center circle when an opponent desires for one of those positions before the referee is ready to toss the ball. Let's take a look at some plays. That is the only two, only time that these two teams will meet in the regular season. We are up and underway. A little bit of a late tip tonight, 8th Central. Nine. My Forsberg and Jesse Dickerson. They are the three on the deck, and the opening tap is controlled to Baylor. Toss it up, and we are underway from Blacksburg. The NC State Wolfpack, one of five remaining unbeaten teams in the critical of him throughout the season, but he has deserved everything that he's gotten the ACC Player of the Week, and I honestly believe he is the ACC Player of the Year. Putting up monster numbers for the Tar Heels. We are underway here at the Dean Dome. The Orange come in. Let's talk about officiating jump ball plays. The toss should go at least one foot above the tallest jumper. If it does not, then one of the officials should whistle for a retoss. The table side official chops in the clock once the ball is legally touched by a jumper. 
Jumpers may touch the ball twice before the ball has to legally touch something else. So let's clarify this. Either jumper can touch the ball twice consecutively or the ball has to touch something else. If non-jumpers are three feet or closer to the center circle, then they cannot move until the ball is tossed. All other non-jumpers further than three feet from the center circle are not restricted from moving prior to the toss. Let's talk about the situation following the jump ball to which one of our teams fully possesses or controls the basketball after the jump ball has ended. In a two-person crew, the tossing official will become trail, and the tableside official will become lead. This will happen in a two-person crew regardless of which team possesses the basketball following the jump ball. In a three-person crew, using the image as seen in this slide, if the ball is controlled by the team in red, our table side official will become lead, our tossing official will become trail, and our remaining official who is table side opposite will become center. Conversely, if the ball is controlled by the team in white in this image, our table side official will become center, our tossing official will become trail, and our remaining Maining official who is table side opposite will become a lead. And that is jump ball in a nutshell. Let the games begin. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great day, a great week, a great month, a great year, a great season.